I'm going to demonstrate an analysis of variance in Insight. So I've got a very simple data set here with uh, a quantitative variable uh, labeled data and a categorical variable or a group number. So these are numerically coded um, and I'm just going to illustrate how we do it. So I've selected the first variable. It's recognized it as quantitative, drawn a box plot of it. Uh, if I choose number, then because of those numerical codes, it's actually treating that also as a numerical or quantitative variable, and it's drawn me a scatter plot, which is not what I want. So my first task is to create a categorical version of it. So if I drag number here, defaults to number.cat, which is fine. Uh, close that. Menu. And then if I select number.cat here, uh, it draws the box plots for me. So it's treating now that, that number variable as a categorical one. Having selected those variables, if I choose get inference, insight does a whole lot of decision making for me tells me the appropriate test or the test I'm likely to want to do to test for a relationship between uh, the data and the group number is an, anal an analysis of variance. Click OK and it produces the output for me. Quite a lot of stuff in here but actually most of it we can you know may find useful. Um, individual confidence intervals for the four group means up here. Um, so these these are the sample means and then lower and upper confidence intervals and we could uh, it's quite illustrative to draw those on a number line and see where and where uh, we're not those overlap um, so we can see considerable overlap between uh, the confidence intervals for groups two three and four means um, whereas the group one mean lower bound 0.91 sits way above the upper bound of all these others <clears throat> the the main uh, hypothesis test is here. Uh, Insight putting the null and alternative hypotheses in words. F is the test statistic. Uh, DF, uh, the F distribution of the test statistic has two lots of degrees of freedom. And this is a nice technical element that we don't necessarily have to understand. Rather, we've been given a p-value, uh, the E minus 0, 0.8 is 10 so that number 3.5685 times 10 to the power minus 0 8 so there's if I bounce the decimal point eight places to the left I end up with zero point and then seven zeros and then the three what we can rely on whenever we see this notation uh, in relation to a p-value is basically that the p-value is tiny um, certainly less than the standard test level of five percent um, certainly less than uh, 1%, so we've got a highly significant result. Uh, this stuff down the bottom here, uh, these are differences in the pairwise sample means, so 1.0487 minus 0.6689 gives us this, this value. Um, confidence intervals associated with the difference in two means and then p-values associated with I think a two-sided test that those two group means are the same and we can see down here uh, the p-values are tiny for each pairwise comparison of the group one mean against group two three or four whereas the p-values for two versus three two versus four three versus four are all much larger than 5%. So that's consistent with the overlap or lack of overlap in the confidence intervals. So a whole lot of nice information in that screen. With an ANOVA, um, we've got two assumptions. Assumption of equal variance, which we can use the interquartile ranges um, to judge. Um, also an assumption of normality for the groups if those are small and so we may need to use the get summary button here um, 
can help us with with sample sizes if we need them. Um, so thanks for all that hard work, Insight. Uh, you've made that an ever very easy for us. Well done.